Did you know that everything that we see depends on the color and the type of light that we have in a certain room? So there's two metrics with lighting that we really need to pay attention. There is the Kelvin or the color of the light that's being produced from a light source. And then there's the CRI, which is the color rendering index. So when we think of lights that we have, like I've got six recessed cans uh, up above my head. I have a little selector that allows me to select something that says 2700, 3000, or 4000. 4000K means 4000 Kelvins, and this is all based off steel. So if we were to take a torch and just heat up steel, it's gonna start changing colors the hotter that it gets. So when we heat up steel initially, what we're gonna get is kind of like this reddish glow, and then it's gonna start turning a little bit more orangish, and then it's gonna start turning more yellow, and then it's gonna turn a little bit more white, and then even hotter, we start getting into blue hues. So all of the color indexes that we see from lights actually comes from the old color that's produced from heating metal. Now, typical Kelvin ratings that you're gonna see on lightings range usually from like 2700K to about 6500K. There are, you know, things above and below that, but what kind of lighting you want in an area is gonna largely affect the mood of that area. So you'll notice um, a lot of like street lights and things like that kind of have like an orangish hue to them depending on the area, depending on if it's like a large public street or if it's just like a parking lot or basketball courts in a park somewhere, um, but there's a reason why colors are chosen. So in my house, I usually don't want a light that's too bluish. Once you get into like the bluish spectrum, it's hyper white and it tends towards blue. And that to me just feels really sterile. That's what I would expect in hospitals. When you're in a hospital waiting room or an operating room or something like that, that type of light, that super hyper bright white is what they want in that environment. They don't want any kind of uh, orangish tint on everything. They, they wanna get as close as possible to like true outdoor lighting. And that has more to do with the color render index and we'll get into that in a second. But if you wanted like kind of mood lighting and you want your house to be chill feeling when you're relaxing in there, you might want something that's a little bit more orangish or yellowish. So you might go to the lower side of that spectrum. So what is CRI? CRI is the color render index. And there's a whole index that goes from zero to 100 that talks about how well a light source can light up an object and render the true colors of that object similar to what the sun does outdoors. So if we're outside and we hold a red apple up, we're gonna be able to take that red apple and bring it into a room. But if we have a low CRI, that red apple is probably gonna appear like orange or something. It's not gonna actually render to our eyes what that true color is. If we have a high CRI, something that's like 90, we're gonna probably be able to take that same light or that same apple from outdoors and put it on a table. And it's gonna look the exact same if we were to compare pictures of them. So it's how well can a light source render true color compared to what the sun can do. So some good examples examples of where you might be able to see this in the real world is something like a metal halide. If you've ever seen metal halide lights up in big street lamps, they're super bright, like crazy bright. The bulbs get like 700 degrees to the touch, but they produce really white light. And when you're under one of them and you look at all of the vehicles, every vehicle looks like the color that it actually is. It renders color really, really well. But if you look at a low pressure sodium lamp, a lot of times they're really orange. And because of the low pressure, they have a monochromatic lighting. Meaning if it's an orange light and you look around, doesn't matter what color any vehicle is, all of the vehicles are gonna look orange. The sidewalk's gonna look orange, you're gonna look orange. It's monochromatic. So it doesn't have any other thing inside of that that arc tube to mix with to get more colors in the color spectrum. So the benefit of having high pressure sodium or metal halide where you have a much higher CRI, it's because they have different things in them. So like metal halides have these things called halide salts. And these halide salts are things like indium, scandium, and sodium. But with the mercury that's inside of this arc tube, when the mercury vaporizes, it also vaporizes these halide salts. And each one of them provides a little bit more color in that lighting spectrum 
So because of that, we can render the actual true color of objects more with those light sources, which is why a lot of people use them. So that all just goes to say that if you're gonna pick out lighting, it's really important to pick out the color of the lighting just for the psychological effect of the mood and how you want things to feel, but it's also really important to look at the CRI on a package to figure out what's actually gonna render when you look at objects. The only reason we see color is because we have photons coming from a light source hitting an object and bouncing back and that electromagnetic vibration is entering into our eye where it vibrates our brain and it sends a signal to our brain. So if we have certain vibrations, certain energy, it's gonna render things differently uh, depending on the energy output of that light source. So making sure that we have a good Kelvin color that we like, but also making sure that the CRI index of what that light source is doing and producing light um, has a high enough number that it can actually render things that we can register as different colors in our eyes. So I've got two lights here. Thank you NDR for sending these and for sponsoring this video, by the way. Uh, this is a five inch BOA. So this is a vapor tight LED flush mount light. You can take PVC, you can actually glue it into here so you can achieve a vapor tight environment, but have a light source that has selectable colors. So this is the Kelvin rating that I was talking about, right? If you look right here, we've got 35K, it's 3.5K, it's 3,500 Kelvin. Uh, 4,000 Kelvin and 5,000 Kelvin. So you have the ability to choose, and this little diagram even shows you have more of like an orangish light down here, then it goes yellow, then it goes white, then it goes blue. So this is the, the Kelvin color that I was talking about. This specific light, by the way, is also dimmable. So it actually says driver zero to 10 volt dimming. So if you have a zero to 10 volt dimming system, you can use these gray and purple wires for the dimming, and then the actual leg would go to the white and the black. And then we've got this, the Razor R. So this is a recessed lighting, but this actually has a re egressed inlay into it. So if you've ever seen cans, a lot of like wafers, they're just flat, right? They don't have like this beveled edge where the light source is regressed down inside of the fixture. So this is a regressed light. This thing is actually listed for wet environments. So another thing people need to be a little careful of is to make sure that they're actually listed for rain tight or weatherproof environments. You might just stick something in and think that it's okay and then fail an inspection. These are actually listed on the box for wet locations. These also have the selectable Kelvin ratings. This one goes 2700 Kelvin to 3000 Kelvin to 4000 Kelvin. So you can get even a little bit more orangish light if you want that with a light like this. So let's look at a couple of things. So like this is a 3500 lumen output light. This is a 1000 lumen output. So this one's gonna be a lot brighter, but if we go to the specs, we can look at the actual wattage for each one, which is really important to look at. So this is a 13 watt light, puts out a thousand lumens. This is a 32 watt light, puts out 3500 lumens. So if we look at the CRI for each one of these, we notice that this light, even though it's brighter, has a lower CRI. So in the environment that we're using this, regardless of what color Kelvin the actual light that's getting put out is, the actual rendering color of this is gonna be lower than if it was gonna be put on this one. This one, the CRI is 90 plus. So this is going to render a lot more true colors to what you would actually see an object be lit up outdoors when you walk outside. We can look at the lumens per watt, the actual efficacy of the bulb. This has really high lumens per watt. So it'll put out 109 lumens per watt that's used on here. So it's just a more efficient bulb, even though it uses more lumens and uses more wattage. Um, this has a 77 lumen per watt efficacy. So this one's actually less efficient, even though it's less wattage and less lumens. But that is the Kelvin color and the CRI color render index. So that's all I got for you. Hope you learned something new. Love you crazy people. And I'll see you in the next one.